Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're using logarithms in non-linear data so we can answer questions from exercise 14H. So what we're going to be doing is representing curved data uh, from an experiment say and using logarithms to change that data into a straight line graph so that we can then approximate what the equation of that line is going to be. So we're effectively going to be taking raw data and finding the equation that fits that data. And what we're going to do is help us uh, to do that is by using logarithms to turn it into a straight line graph first and then we can pull out the key components of that straight line graph. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use a logarithmic scale which can turn a curved line into a straight line. And there are two different types of equations that we're going to look at here. This one here is the polynomial type where um, we have y equals some number a times x to the power of b. So b here is a power on the variable x. But in type 2 here you can see that the b and the x are swapped around now. So this is effectively an exponential type graph, the ones that we've just been looking at in this chapter. So for example, this could be e to the x or 2 to the x, for example. But the x variable is the one that's on the power, whereas this one here is the number that's on the base that's being powered. Say it's being squared or cubed, or maybe even being halved as a power, which is square rooting it. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at two transformations that's going to turn this curvy shaped graph into a straight line graph. So the way we do this is we start out with our equation, and you'll have to remember these steps uh, for the exam, is what we're going to do is first is take logs of both sides. Now it just says log here, it doesn't have a base to it. Now what I'm going to refer to as log for the rest of this video is log with a base of anything, and generally we use 10. So it's log base 10. If you see log for the rest of this video, it means log base 10. We could use any number, but we generally use 10. OK, carrying on. So we've got log base 10 of y equals log base 10 of axb. And what we can then do is to help split this up to make it look like y equals mx plus c, a straight line graph, is to split up the use this right-hand side using the laws of logs. So it's log of y equals log of a plus b log of x. And you can see here the b has come to the front as a power, as a multiplier at the front of the log, and we've split up the multiplication using an addition. So what we can do here is represent this with y equals mx plus c. Now the y here is effectively going to be a log y from now on. So on our y-axis, it's not going to be y, it's going to be log y. For the constant at the front that's going to intersect the y-axis, or the log y-axis now, is going to be this value of log a. So if we find what the constant here is, or the y-axis intersection, we can do the inverse of a log um, to find out what a is. Okay, so c here, the constant term is now log a. And remember, log a, a is just a number, so it is going to effectively be a number here. The x variable, that's going to now be log x. So if we imagine this graphically, we're going to have a y-axis of log y now and an x-axis of log x. So we've turned both of the axes into log axes. So what does that mean the gradient is? Well, it's the only letter we haven't looked at yet, which is the letter b. So the gradient of our curve that we get is effectively the value b, which is, if we work back, is equal to the power on the um, x at the front here. Okay, so the gradient is the value b. Let's have a look at the type 2 one now. So what we're looking at here is exponential type equations where we have, uh, say, an interest rate that's decreasing, that's increasing, or a car rate that's uh, depreciating in value. Generally, when we have exponential growth, say the back growth of bacteria in a Petri dish, it's represented by this form here, a times b to the power of x. So it's just b to the power of x here, and then you times it by a. And what we're going to look at is turning this also, just like we did here, into a straight line graph. It's going to look a little bit different, but not too different. So taking logs of both sides like we did before, remember log here is log base 10, and splitting up the right-hand side using laws of logs. 
So we get log of y, just like we did before, equals log of a, just like we did before. That's the constant still. But you can see from here and here that the x and the b have now swapped positions. Now what does this mean for the graph? Well, that means that the x-axis is still going to be the x-axis. And the b part here, that's now the gradient. So log b equals m. So looking at this and comparing it to y equals mx plus c, the y's, they're still exactly the same as they were before. So the y-axis is going to be log y. The c value is going to be log of a, just like it was over here. But the only difference here is that the x variable is just going to be the value x. And the gradient of this graph is going to be log of b. Okay. So it's really important that you remember both different types of uh, equations and what their defining features are when it comes to the graph. Let's have a little look at that graph. So for these functions here, the left-hand side is going to initially start with something that looks like an x-squared type graph like this. But what it's going to turn into once we've applied all these logs is a straight line graph that looks a little bit like this. So this graph here and this graph here are effectively the same graph. It will represent the same data points, but if you look on these axes here, that's what's going to change. It's now going to have a log y axis and a log x axis like this function does here. And when we look at this graph, we're going to draw these types of graphs or we're going to be given these types of graphs we can identify that log a is going to be the y-intercept, the value c, and the gradient here, that's going to be the value b. So the gradient equals the value b. And for the exponential type growth functions here, like e to the x or like 2 to the x, this graph is going to change into this type of graph here. Now look at the differences between the two graphs. We've got log of x on the bottom of the polynomial one, and we've just got x on the bottom of the exponential one. The, great, the, the value on the y-axis is still going to be exactly the same, but the gradient has changed as well. When we work out the gradient, we're going to be working out what log of b is, rather than just the value b like we would over here. So if you want a summary for this video, effectively, it's this page here. And make sure you've got all the notes from this page here, so we can then apply them in the next questions. Okay, so this is an example of a type 1 type equation where we have an exponent, where we have a polynomial type growth. So in this question here, the data shows the rank by size of population in UK cities. So the second biggest city is uh, Birmingham, 1 million population, the third biggest city, and so on and so on. And what we think happens is that there is a formula that links the population of the city um, and the rank of that city in population size. So that's what we're going to suggest. And we're going to suggest that it is of the form a times r to the power of n. So you substitute in the rank number, you do it to the power of some value, and then you times it by the a number. The a number is going to be pretty big here. And straight away from seeing this equation here, we should be able to identify that that is a type 1 problem here. Um, we don't call it type 1, we just call it a polynomial type graph. And if we were to sketch the points on this graph here, what we would see is that for the second biggest city, it has a high population, and as the rank increases in size of population, the size of the population decreases. So I imagine here that the value r, so the value n, is going to be a negative value. Otherwise it would look like an increasing graph. So what we're going to do first is we're going to um, convert this graph into a log type graph. So we have to take logs of <clears throat> the log of the rank and the log of the population. So this is log base 10, remember. So grab any calculator and using the log base 10 function, we fill in these values here. So if you were to do log base 10 of a million, you would get 6 exactly. 
And now what we're going to do is plot this graph here. So now this forms a nice straight line here. And if it didn't form a straight line, then we'd suspect that this formula here would be incorrect. But seeing as it does form a straight line, we're going to assume that, yeah, we've got this model pretty much bang on. So using this uh, line of best fit now, we can estimate the value of A and the value of N. So just before we do that, what we're looking at here is just the exact same data points, just on a different scale. Okay, these are exactly the same graphs on a different scale. Now, what we're going to do first is we're going to join these lines up and create a line of best fit. And then we're going to look at what the equation of that line of best fit tells us. Now, we remember that it's a type 1 equation, okay? And remember from type 1, we know that uh, the point at which it cuts the x-axis, so the y-axis here, is effectively equal to log A. And we know that the gradient here is equal to the value B. So what we can do now is work out these values using the line of best fit and work out what A and B need to be. And that's what we're looking for here to answer part C here. Use your graph to estimate the values of A and B to two significant figures. So looking at the y-intercept here, what we see is we get log of A, which is our y-intercept, of about 6.2. That's our measurement that we've estimated that's on there. And if we want to find A, what's the inverse of a log base 10? Well, it's 10 to the power of both sides. So now we need to do A equals 10 to the power of 6.2, which is approximately 1.6 million. Okay, so in our equation for A, we get uh, 1.6 million. And now looking at the gradient here, uh, a useful tip to work out the gradient on these types of functions here is take the first point, take the last point, and do a little bit of difference in y divided by difference in x. So here I've got 5.68 minus 6.16 divided by 0 0.77 take away 0 0.05. And the gradient in this case is minus 0 0.67. So the gradient here is equal to the value b. So that means that the power on the x function here is minus 0 0.67. So our final answer here, in the form of p equals a r to the n, we've worked out what a is, we've worked out what n is, and the formula is 1,600,000 times the rank number to the power of minus 0 0.67. OK, so that's how you do a question of type 1, where we have a polynomial type, uh, type of nonlinear data. OK, these are pretty difficult, but do bear with me. You'll have a bit of practice at the end of this video. Um, so effectively, what we've seen here is this original set of points here can now be represented using an equation that we've worked out uh, previously. Right then, let's have now another look at type 2 now. So we'll go through this sort of question now. Um, so the key difference here is that this time when we work out the gradient, we don't just leave that answer alone like we did previously. We need to do um, the inverse of a log of that value to work out what B is. And the key defining feature as well is we should see X on its own on the X axis. So let's have a look at this question here. Um, it's an example of type 2. And it represents the growth of a population of bacteria, which is what we'd expect to be exponential growth. Uh, the graph has a gradient of 0 0.6, brilliant, we've already given that, and a vertical height on the x on the y-axis of 2, perfect. So we've basically given all of the information we need here. And we can see here it's got a t on the x-axis here, which indicates to us, yes, yeah, an exponential type growth. A scientist suggests that growth is modelled by the equation p equals a b to the power of t, where a and b are constants to be found. Write down the equation of this line. Well, it looks like y equals mx plus c. And we'll follow up with these questions here. So looking at the y-intercept for y equals mx plus c, we get a y-intercept of 2. So our y-intercept is 2, and the gradient on this graph we're told in the question is 0 0.6. So it's effectively y equals 0.6x plus 2. 
But remember our axes are not y and x, are they? They're log p and t. So really the equation here is log p, y effectively, equals 2, the value c, plus the gradient, uh, 0.6, times the x-axis, which is t here. So we're effectively just using y equals mx plus c, but just substituting in the right letters and the right numbers. This could be 0.6t plus 2 as well. Okay, part B then. Using your answer to part A or otherwise, find the value of A and B to three significant figures. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the properties that we had for type 2 on our exponential type graph. Now, for the value c on the y-intercept, we get the value of log a. So if we want to work out the value of a, we're going to need to do 10 to the power of 2, which is the inverse of log base 10. So the a value here is 100. What do we need to do to work out the value for b? Well, that's corresponding to the gradient, and we know from an exponential type growth that the gradient is representing log of b. So log b equals 0.6, so 10 to the power of 0.6 is 3.98. So what we can now say is that uh, we have a final equation here of p equals 100 times 3.98 to the power of t. That's effectively what we worked out our a value to be and our b value to be in this question. Okay, the next question here is interpret the meaning of the constant a in this model. Well, a here effectively represents, if we let t equal 0, anything to the power of 0 is just a 1. So we get p is 100. So what does a mean? Well, a represents the fact that we have a 100 uh, population of bacteria initially or when time equals 0. So in this case, 100 gives the initial size of the bacteria population, and that will always be the case. The value that goes at the front of an exponential type equation is representing how much of something we have when t equals 0, or when x equals 0. Right, okay then, so quite a challenging chapter here. Um, pause the video and try your best with this question here. If you need to flick uh, back to the... Um, flick back to the part of the video that has all the summary on it, then please do. Um, I should be an is here. Okay, so a scientist is modelling. Pause the video and have a go at this question. Okay, so a scientist is modelling the number of people N who have fallen sick after a virus after T days. From looking at this graph, the scientists suggest that the number of sick people can be modelled by the equation n equals a times b to the power of t, where a and b are constants to be found. The graph passes through 0, 1.6 and 10, 2.55. The first part here is to write down the equation of the line uh, that we've got here. So in this case here, what we need is y equals mx plus c if it's a straight line. Now the gradient here is going to be calculated through working out the, um, the difference in y over difference in x on these two points here. So it's a difference of um, 0.95 and difference in x of 10. So here difference in y divided by difference in x is going to be 0.095. So here, y, oh, not y, it's log n. So log n equals the gradient, which is 0 0.095 times x, but x is t plus c. And that's effectively 1.6 on this uh, y-axis intersection here. Okay, the next part here is to find the value of a and b. Well, I know here that for the uh, y-axis intersection, that's effectively representing the value of log a. So log a here equals 1.6. So in this case here, to work out the value of a, I need to do 10 to the power of 1.6, which gives me uh, 10 
to the power of 1.6, which gives me 39.8. Okay, and I know that given this is an exponential type growth model, I know that the gradient here is going to be log of b. So it's log of b equals 0 0.095. So we're working with a type 2 uh, equation here. So if we want to work out the value of b here, what we need to do is 10 to the power of 0 0.095, which gives us the value of 1.245. 1 4, 5. Okay, so these are the values of A and B, so that's part B done. Uh, so if we were to write a, an equation for the number of people going sick, then it's the number of people going sick equals 39.8 times 1 point, sorry, um, yeah, 1 1.245 to the power of x. Now what is this meaning? Well what this is meaning is that there is a 24.5% increase every day. Okay, in the number of people that are going off sick. Why 24.5? Well if you remember it's like a percentage multiplier, isn't it? 1.245 is a 24.5% increase from a value of 1 effectively. Okay, right, nearly there then, so interpret the value of A. So what does A mean? Well, A here represents the number of people that are going to be sick at t x equals 0, or t equals 0, rather. When t equals 0, n equals 39.8. Uh, so therefore, uh, initially... So writing this in terms of the context of the question, therefore initially um, the number of sick people, and don't leave it as a decimal of, of a person, round it to the nearest person, the number of sick people was 40 people approximately. Okay. So that is the final answer for this question here. This is quite a difficult chapter, so or a diff difficult exercise. So do have lots of practice. Complete all the questions um, so that if you if anything else comes up, you'll have seen as many different types of the questions as you can. Right. Thanks very much for watching this video. And uh, when you're working through these questions, make sure you persevere and ask your teacher for help if you need any. Right. Thanks for watching.